Well, good morning, Lakeshore, and welcome to Church Online. And for those of you who are joining us for the first time, we hope that you feel welcome and a part of the service. In just a few moments, our worship team is going to be coming up to lead us into some worship. So let's go ahead and get our hearts ready and worship together.
Sorry, I didn't realize you were there. I was just taking some time to look at these pictures that my son Bennett posted on Instagram. He posted these pictures with his new camera of some flowers and beautiful things in God's creation. And the things in God's creation are so amazing. And you know, when I see those things, it actually stirs my heart towards worshiping God. Because I'm reminded that he is the one who made these flowers that I'm looking at. He's the one that made every bird, every tree. He's the one that made you and who made me. And you see, God deserves my worship. And that's our mega point for today, kids, that I really want you to get. God deserves my worship. And there's a verse from the Bible that I'd like to uh, just show you and teach you today, all of you who are watching and listening, that expresses this so well. It's from Revelation 4.11. So here it goes. I'm going to do the verse, and I want you to repeat after me. Can you do that? Okay, here we go. Revelation 4.11. You are worthy, O Lord our God to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things. 
All right, let's try it all together. Ready? Here we go. Revelation 4, 11. You are worthy, O Lord our God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things. I want to show you something from the life of Jesus that happened that shows us and reminds us of just how worthy he is to receive our praise. Check this out. It was Passover time. Jerusalem was filled with people. When Jesus reached the Mount of Olives, a hill overlooking Jerusalem, he told two of his disciples to find a donkey. They found the donkey and put their cloaks on it. Jesus rode on the donkey, fulfilling the Bible verse that says, Here comes your king, Jerusalem, riding on a donkey. Jesus rode the donkey down to Jerusalem. Many people remembered his miracles and joined him. They put cloaks and palm branches on the road before him to honor him. They hoped that Jesus was God's promised Savior. So they shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the King of Israel! The whole world is following him, the Pharisees grumbled. Tell them to be quiet, Jesus. Even if everyone stopped shouting, Jesus replied, the stones would still praise me. Jesus is our God and King. The people of Jerusalem, they worshiped him because they knew that he deserved all the glory and honor and praise. And if the people didn't worship him, then the rocks would have, because everything that God has created is an expression of his power and his strength. Now, do you ever wonder how exactly would a rock worship? I'm thinking it'd be something like, I don't know, I'm not really sure how a rock would worship, but what I do know is that God deserves my worship. You know what, sometimes you may be worshiping God without even knowing it. Because you know what, you don't have to be in a church to worship. You can do it anywhere and anytime. Now out of all the ways that there are to worship, you know, do I have to worship God in all of those ways? We're all made differently by God. There are all kinds of ways that you might express your worship to God. You know, even in your own family, there might be a lot of different ways people do it. I know in my family, uh, I play guitar, uh, my kids are really talented in art and in drawing and sketching, and uh, my daughter loves to sing. There's all these different ways we can worship the Lord, and it might be things like you see in church, like singing and dancing, or with your hands raised up, or maybe it's just being quiet and being still. Whatever it is that you love to do, that can be used by God as an expression of worship. So how do I figure out how I'm supposed to worship God? Start by asking him and look for ways that you can express your love for him in simple things that you do every day. And remember this, our mega point, God deserves my worship. Have a great day, kids. Thanks for joining us for church.
Last week, we asked for you guys to send us in videos of you worshiping, because this Sunday, we have a theme of worship. So, we're going to go ahead and check out some of those videos of our church family worshiping. You are we make miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. 
His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. church for those of you who do not know me yet i'm pastor jonathan i'm the new uh the youth pastor here and i'm super excited to be sharing a portion of the scripture with you along with pastor kevin and pastor troy we're focusing on three points today yesterday today and forever and for me right now i'm going to be focusing on yesterday all through the bible we see uh of all the miracles and amazing things that God has done. God, you know, he's freed people. He has uh, healed the blind. He's healed the lame so they could walk. And the list goes on and on. And it's actually quite, an, it can be quite an exhaustive list if, if we go through all the miracles and things that he's done. But they are so amazing. But something that we see, uh, a common theme rather that we see through the Bible, after God moves and after God does these things, we tend to see uh, the biblical audience, they start to actually worship. They lift up songs of praise unto God. They, you know, they, they lift up their hands and praise, God, you are so good for the things you've done. God, you've freed us from this. God, you've, you've healed us of these things. God, we thank you. God, we glorify you. We give you the praise and the honor. And it's something that we see a lot throughout the Bible. We see people reflecting back on the things that God has done. And then in the present time, they worship him for the things that he has done. Today in our text, we're going to be looking at Exodus chapter 15, verses 1 through 2. Now, this is a very short portion of scripture, but it is very powerful if I do say so myself. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a minute to turn uh, in your Bibles to Exodus chapter 15, and then we'll go ahead and get right into the word. I'm going to be using my phone uh, this morning, uh, so don't, uh, <laughs> don't be too upset. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and it reads... Then Moses and the Israelites began singing the song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord. He has done great things. He threw horse and rider into the sea. The Lord is my strength. He saves me and I sing songs of praise to him. He is my God and I praise him. He is the God of my ancestors and I honor him. Now, this song is, in fact, a holy song. It is a song that is honoring uh, God. It is honoring unto God. And actually, specifically, depending on some of the translations you read, it's actually, it says that they're singing to Yahweh. They're singing their praises to Yahweh. They're lifting him up. They're not, you know, they're not, they're not praising Moses for the things he did and the, the things that he helped with. And we're going to talk about this in just a second. But they're praising God. They're lifting their praises up to God, saying, God, you are so good. You, you, threw, you threw the horses and the men into the sea and, and, and saved them. And so they sing praise unto God. They continue to sing praise and, and give glory and honor unto him. Now, what's really amazing, I think, that makes this song so powerful is actually if you go ahead and go into the chapter beforehand, that's chapter 14, and even more so if you go through the rest of the story of Moses, but we're just going to go on back into chapter 14, and in chapter 14, we'll see a subheading where it says that Pharaoh actually sent out an army. He decided, you know what? I'm not going to let these Israelites go and be free. I'm going to send my army after them. So he sent an army of 600. 
and each chariot that he sent had an officer in each one. Now, can you imagine having an army of 600 horses and chariots with, you know, the, the best, most in shape, fit soldiers coming after you? And the only place that you see ahead is a great big sea. I know I think I would be pretty afraid and pretty scared and I wouldn't know what to do myself. Now Moses, with God's help, approaches the Red Sea and splits it into two. So there's a pathway for the Israelites to go right down the center. So they make their way and they go right through. But if the sea is split wide open, then Pharaoh's army is able to come through as well. And so Pharaoh's army starts coming through. But as the Israelites make it in, make it to safety, the sea starts to close and close in on the army. It drowns Pharaoh's army and the Israelites are now set free. They're just, you know, they're just chased down by this big army. A sea split open for them with God's help. They crossed through it, were set free, and the army that was chasing them was drowned in the sea. Now, if this isn't a reason to praise and worship God, I do not know what is. Now, how often do we as Christians take time to celebrate and worship God for the things that he has done? Sometimes it's hard to do this. Sometimes we forget, especially when we're going through seasons and when we're battling and when we, maybe we're having our, our own armies chasing us and we're coming to our own Red Sea, whatever that circumstance looks like. It might be hard to worship, but it's important that we remember that we look back and think of the amazing things that God has done and that the moment that we even get through that season, that the first thing we do is that we, we don't sit back and go, oh, Brother, we go, thank you, God. We praise you, Lord. We lift up your name. We praise you for the things that you've done. And sometimes you might be finding it hard to worship. But oftentimes, the starting point of worship is remembering and thanking God for the things he's done. That we'd be thankful that we'd enter his gates with thanksgiving in our heart. We see that in scripture, that we'd enter his gates. That we'd have thanksgiving. And that's the, often the starting point of worship. That we'd start to give our thanks unto God, saying, God, thank you for the things you've done. God, thank you for freeing me from these things. God, thank you for, for pulling me out of this darkness. God, thank you for helping me with this battle. And that's often when we can actually start to praise God when we find it hard to. Just start to thank him. Today, whatever it is, whatever it is that you need to thank God for, start to thank him and start to give up, offer up that praise unto him and sing a holy song to him, exalting him for the things he's done. And with today having a theme of worship and hearing worship songs from other people, I thought, hey, why don't I go ahead and share a song that's near and dear to my heart. And I'm going to sing an old hymn that I'm sure some of you uh, know, and it goes right along perfectly with what I've been talking about today. And it goes like this. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Amen. So let's practice and enter into his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. And on that note, I'm going to send things over to Pastor Kevin. Hey, everybody. You caught me just right in the middle of my run here. Right on. Well, I'm just going to take a little breather here for a couple minutes. Thanks so much, Pastor Jonathan, for what you just shared. And uh, we're talking yesterday, today, and forever. I want to just think for a moment here, um, what does it mean for me to live out a daily life of worship today, in this moment, right now? You know, it's one thing for me to look back in the past and recall God's faithfulness and his goodness and for that to be a fuel for my worship. But how do I worship when the reality that maybe I'm living in right now is hard? when I'm struggling? How do I worship when my life just seems to be maybe filled with pain, disappointment, unexpected loss and stress? Or on the flip side, maybe you're watching this here today and you know what, you're actually in a season where it's just the opposite. Everything is going pretty well. You might be a lifer at this whole church thing. Uh, you're comfortable, things are going well. There's no major crisis in your life. But if you're honest, the passion meter when it comes to your worship is maybe at about a two or a three out of 10 right now. So how do I live today in a worship relationship with Jesus that's actually active and engaged? Whether I feel like I'm on the mountaintop or I'm down in the valley or I'm somewhere in between. You know, I think that the psalmist David, he points us in the right direction in Psalm 
34, verse 1, when he says this, he writes these words. He says, I will worship the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. Something that we notice when we look at the life of David is that he worships the Lord no matter what season of life he's in, whether it's a good season or a difficult season. And I really think that that's because David was a worshiper. It's who he was. It wasn't just something that he did. And that's a really important distinction for us to recognize. It's an important part of my identity that I am a worshiper. It's not just something that I do. Now, when David writes this psalm, uh, things are not going well in his life. He's been on the run from King Saul, who wants to kill him. Uh, he's just left the enemy city of Gath, where the Philistines are, and they aren't happy that he's there. And so he has to actually pretend that he's a madman and let drool run down his beard so that they'll think he's nuts. Uh, and they will take pity on him and not kill him. It's not been a great day at the office for David. And it's right at this moment that David says, you know what, praise God. Verse two, I will glory in the Lord. Verse three, glorify the Lord with me. Let's exalt his name together. I mean, is David crazy? Is he out of touch with what's going on in his life? No, David is a worshiper. It's who he is. It's not just something that he did when it's convenient or when it was easy. Can I let you in on a secret? I have this longing in my heart to actually live a life of worship to God. But here's the thing. If this was to become true in my life, then literally every second that I have breath would be affected by that reality. The way that I would speak, the way that I would talk and think and act at any given moment, it would be shaped by my desire to glorify and bring honor to God. You see, being a worshiper is a bit how like I want to be a runner. You see, all of my life, I've had pretty good endurance. I've really enjoyed long distance running. Uh, even now with my somewhat out of shape body, I can slap on some running shoes. I can head out. I can go for a run and I can enjoy myself. I can do running and I like to run. But if I was to be honest with you and with myself today, I think I'd have to say that right now I am not a runner. You know, this run that I just did, this is only probably the second or third time that I've been out running in the last 10 months or so. You see, running has not been a top priority for me. It's something that I think about doing a lot. I have the potential to do it really well, but it's not something that I've made a number one priority. Now I wonder, at what stage would I be able to actually call myself a runner? Would it be when I could maybe run a half marathon or when I was in incredible shape and sliced and diced and perfectly disciplined with all my training? When I maybe got the best set of shoes and you know I got all the best apps on my phone to track all my runs? No, I become a runner at the moment that running actually becomes a part of the daily rhythm of my life. I'm a runner when I start you know, walking through each day and going for a run is just something that I do. It's a daily habit. It's something I don't even have to really think about very much. And that, that's what it's like when it comes to my worship life. I need to determine that I'm going to live my life in such a way that fresh surrender and worship of Jesus is the order of the day for every moment of every day. It's not just a Sunday thing. It's in all of life. So here's my challenge for you today. Simply take a next step towards making worship a holy habit in your life. Hear these words from Psalm 34 that David writes today and ask the Holy Spirit to help you be a worshiper in all of life. So when you're going out and you're coming in, in your work, in your play, whether it's your family time or your alone time, in every part of the day, commit to living a life filled with fresh surrender to Jesus and with worship at the center. Don't put it off. Let's do it today. Well, thanks for listening, everyone. I'm going to Hand it off to Pastor Troy and uh, hit the trail. I got to continue my transformation into a runner. Okay, I'll see you later. Okay, we're now on to the third portion of our sermon. We are talking about yesterday, today, and forever, and our praise and worship of our God. My uh, job today is to talk about the forever, the future. 
We worship God because we have an expectation of a great future with Him. Let's look at our lives today as if we were a roll of toilet paper. Let's say that every sheet of this toilet paper represented a month of your life. There goes the month of May. Here comes and goes the month of June. If this was your life and every sheet represented a month of it, uh, some of us would only be one roll of toilet paper. If you're 60 to 70 years old, you're probably three double rolls of toilet paper. But imagine your life spreading on way beyond that into eternity. There's rolls and rolls. There's truckloads of toilet paper. And that's your life. We are looking ahead to that future, that forever. And we worship God because of it. Look at this verse. I'm going to bring you in close to see it. It says, therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. As we look at this passage, we are looking ahead to a glorious future. God exalted Jesus past tense, but we have yet to see every knee bow and every tongue confess Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe that day is coming. It's coming in eternity and we look ahead to it with a, a glorious expectation. So we're celebrating our God today and I want to share three quick points uh, with you. We are living in a, the now and the not yet. You see my picture of the fish bowls. We are going from what we know to that which we do not know, eternity. We're looking ahead to that. And so here's what I want to share with you today. Number one, my worship reminds me of who God is and what he has promised. God has given us some great promises both in this life and the life to come. The scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Yes and amen. When you're saying amen, you're saying, I agree. You're saying, Lord, let it be. Somebody else is praying. You say amen at the end. You're agreeing with them. We believe God's got exciting things ahead for us. Second point I want to make today. My worship readies me for what God wants to do in my life. It gets me ready. I'm not always in tune with what God is doing. I go out of tune really quickly. I need to be brought back to that. Look at this scripture from Psalm 103 verse 1. It says, Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. I have to tell myself. Here, the psalm writer tells himself, Hey, soul, my intellect, my emotions, my will, I need to come back into tune with what God is doing, and I do that through praise. God, release my praise that I might be in tune with you and what you want to do in my life. If we were to take an honest look at some of the songs we sing in church, we're not in tune with these words. Look at this one. Lord, I give you my heart. Some of us Honestly, can we sing that? Oh, maybe we'd give God our wisdom teeth or our appendix. Are you ready to give him your heart, your all, your everything? How about this one? I surrender all. Same thing. Many of us, we, we can't honestly sing that. We'd be better off singing, I surrender some. Lord, I'll give you some. But are we ready to give all? In my father's house, there's a place for me. That gets my heart back in tune. It's not about having a, a suburban house with a picket fence and 1.7 cars in the driveway and having a central air and all the, the amenities of this life. I want my heart to be tuned in to what God is doing and his eternal values. And that's a chore sometimes. Lord, tune my heart back to what you want to do. Because until we do that, we're spiritually asleep to what some of some of what God wants to do. Just like my friend Mr. Bean in this famous picture here. Let's wake up to what God wants to do. Lord, ready my heart for what you want to do. And the last one, the third of my points today, my worship reveals my allegiance. It shows that my heart is sold out to God. I am committed to him. 
Can you imagine? I watched a, a, a scene a few years back where there was a young man at a, at a sporting event and he was wearing the uh, jersey of his favorite team. But as the game went on, the camera panned over to this young man and all of a sudden he, was, he had changed jerseys and he was wearing the other team. He's switching from one to another. Where is your allegiance? We want to be committed to one team, to God's team. Check out this shirt I've got on right here, my Lakeshore Community shirt. We're committed to what God is doing. That's our firmest allegiance. I want to encourage you today with a story I heard. A young couple in a country in Asia where the gospel can bring great threat and persecution. This young couple, let's call them Sam and Barb, uh, they came to Christ and when their family found out, the family came and knocked at their door and they said, you must denounce this and walk away from Jesus Christ. And they said, you can beat us, you can kill us, but we are committed to Christ. I don't know what happened to that young couple, but I know many people around the world are making a tough decision to express their allegiance to Christ. You and I have to do the same thing. My worship says, I'm yours, Lord. I belong to you. I wanted to illustrate this for you. So I prepared a little song to share with you. I put together a music video that says what praise means to me and what I am saying as I am praising. I am committing myself in allegiance to Jesus Christ. I am tied in with him. I've hitched my wagon to what he is doing and whatever happens in this life. Lord, I belong to you and my worship belongs to you. I hope you enjoy this little song I prepared for you today. This will be the new normal. New normal. New normal. We all need to stay home. Flatten the curve. Practice social distancing. Stay inside. And uh, hang out in your basement. Everybody just stay inside. And away from the crowds and away from outside. We will get through what comes next together. It's going to be okay. Uh, everyone stay safe and, uh, and God bless.
we are in your hands.
the great I am, the great I am, the great I am. You're the great I am, the great I am, the great I am. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Holy God, Lord, we praise your name. We worship you, Lord. Oh, you're so mighty. You're so holy, Lord. Be honored by your praise. We love you, Lord. Thank you so much for joining us, Lakeshore. We trust and hope that you were blessed by this service and that God was able to say something specifically to you. For those of you who are still wanting to give, uh, you can do so by e-transfer at lccdonations at kojako.net. That is lccdonations at kojako.net. It is safe and secure. There is no middleman. It goes from one account to the church account. Safe, simple, and secure. Anyway, Lakeshore, thank you so much for joining us, and we cannot wait to see you again next week.